welcome to Two Boomer Women. I'm your host, Agnes Knowles. I've been talking with Boomer Women for almost a decade now. (laughs) Well, I guess I've been talking to Boomer Women all my adult life. Uh, Reinventing myself several times along the way, though, but always focused on us, Boomer Women. With this incarnation of Two Boomer Women, I'll be interviewing other women who have a message of interest for our demographic. If you want to hear about or learn about something specific, let me know and I'll find someone who understands us to talk about it. There's a contact page at twoboomerwomen.com. If you want to be a guest on Two Boomer Women, bring it on. There's an application form at the website, too. Finally, this show is all about conversation. We women know its value. We know how to do it, and we must perpetuate the art form. So let's get started with today's show. Welcome to the Two Boomer Women Podcast. I'm your host, Agnes Knowles. Are you a high-achieving but under-fulfilled professional? Maybe you work in a toxic environment in a job that no longer aligns with your personal values. Are you topped out at your organization? Maybe feeling called to make a bigger impact while you can, or you're overlooked for the promotions you deserve. My guest today had a pretty impressive career until she realized she was stalling out. In fact, she felt like her soul was dying. As boomer women, some of us may have another 10 or more years in the workplace, and a dead soul is not something we want to take into retirement. Shelley Johnson, welcome to the Two Boomer Women podcast. Agnes, thank you so much for inviting me. I'm thrilled to be here. Yeah, this is great. Who is Shelley Johnson, in her own words? I'm a soul-inspired human that wants to connect with people around the world and help people reach their full potential. You reached executive level in several Fortune 500 companies. Uh, You worked internationally. That's pretty impressive. What was that journey like? The journey was amazing. Um, I have lived and worked internationally, Asia, Mexico, Latin America, and Europe. And that was awesome because I really got to see so many different cultures and experience different people, how they live, how business is done. And I really think I'm blessed that I have had the opportunity to have a career like I've had. You know, even though there are big names, what I've learned is that I really am much better in like small to medium sized companies um, or one on one. So that I really can increase that connectivity from moving away just from people living in their head to living in their heart. And so it's been impressive, but I think I have shifted so much that I'm blessed and grateful to have that. But my next chapter does not have those titles and high level roles in them. Are you comfortable telling our listeners about the wall you hit in your career? And how you listen to, in in your words, uh, a message from the universe, the message from the universe. Yeah, of course. I love sharing that story. The wall I hit was, I just felt like a complete imposter. I was in a very high level director role with a major media and entertainment company. And I was just going through the motions of life and surviving, but I was barely surviving. I mean, I, I was making emotionally unintelligent decisions where it's kind of like if you are not feeling the best, you can't be curious and creative and you're in this monotonous trudge and sludge of life. And so the message that I got, I've had several, thank goodness. And one of them was The seed was planted about seven years ago when I went to Spain and I did the pilgrimage across Spain. I did the last um, 150 miles and really got some time to have silence and solitude. And I was at a mass in the Catholic church in Santiago de Compostela. And the message that I got is no matter where you are in life, if it's very mountainous and treacherous, and there are cliffs that you have to 
overcome or if your life is very flat and stable and kind of like just the same day in and day out or if it's a bit hilly where you have some things that are going on but not like those times where the mountains look like they're way too high to climb the message that I got is that no matter what that the universe walks with me and is with me and will always allow me to not just survive but thrive is that the Camino? Is I'm trying to remember what it's called. Yes, it's called El Camino de Santiago. And I did the last 150 miles of that. And I actually am looking to take some people to Spain next year for their own experience so that they can get their own message if it comes. We'll have to get you back on podcast. I would love to hear more about that. And and especially if you're taking other people, it'll be interesting to see if they have that same inner communication that you had. So I really believe that the universe conspires to bring me the people that I'm supposed to work with or the listeners that are supposed to hear my message. And I don't try to force a solution ever. Um, so if they get it, that's wonderful. But if not, they're going to get to see and understand and live the culture of Portugal and Spain. Sounds great. Uh, I've been to Spain. Absolutely love it. I'd go back in a second. Ageism seems to be a common thread uh, amongst older women who are still trying to advance. Sexism. What other things, isms, can suck the life out of a professional woman? Well, ageism is a huge one. And I've worked with, I actually work with mostly women over 40 and sexism as well. The other isms, maybe not isms, but these negative thoughts and the, what I call saboteurs, these things that are hijacking them. And like, I'm not good enough. I'm a disappointment. I'm a failure. I'm too old. I'm not smart enough, not pretty enough, not just not enough. Those kinds of thoughts within themselves are really the things that sabotage them from going into being their best self. Um, You know, we could talk a lot, Agnes, about ageism, and that is real. But I have to tell you, so many of my clients that are leaning into their confidence and their courage. They are living the life because I think, you know, 60 is the new 50 and people are living longer. And so many people don't want to retire and they want to do something that's meaningful, that has a holistic and community approach. One of my clients actually is 65 and she was in the oil and gas industry for most of her career. She was really burnt out and stressed out. We worked with her isms and got her mental fitness and positive intelligence back where she was resonating and felt really confident. She had two offers in one day for a 20% increase in pay. So I just want your listeners to know that there are stories out there like that. There, Hollywood is celebrating older actresses. You know, there's so many different examples of that. I'm glad you mentioned positive intelligence and mental fitness. Can you unpack that, those for our listeners, please? Absolutely. Positive intelligence is a book and a program. The book is written by Dr. Shirzad Shamin, who is a Stanford professor It's a top Ivy League university in the United States. Positive intelligence is about recognizing your judge, which everyone has. And then there are nine saboteurs or pieces of is your judge and are you a hyperachiever, a controller, a victim, a stickler, a hyperrational, et cetera. And We go through the seven-week program and quiet that judge and then really focus on living life from a perspective of wisdom, what is called your sage. 
So it's scientifically proven and it's a combination of cognitive psychology, positive psychology, and neuroscience. And within the seven weeks, the goal is to have the participants go through it. They spend 15 to 20 minutes a day using an app on your phone. They watch one video a week. And then I've actually taken over 50 people through this program. And we are in communities with up to eight people. So that is how the isms start to go away, but it's through consistency and practice and long-term commitment that really make those changes. Just before I move on, because I do have specific things I want to ask you about, is ageism sometimes just self-inflicted then? It can be because of the way it's thought of, but I do believe ageism is out there. Mm -hmm. We're in a unique time in the workforce where there are five generations. Everything from new college grads are iGens. Then you have millennials, traditionalists, baby boomers, Gen Xers. So a lot of the, it depends on the industry also. Startup companies may want to hire younger, if you will. But um, since I work with mostly women over 40, we work on how to actually leverage the age as an asset. Yeah, I've just recently been reading um, somebody else who was talking about exactly that, just even with startups, where to have that elder person, as long as you have the expertise, of course, there's so many other things that you can bring to a job. Exactly. On your website, you quote a statistic, 80% of people score below the minimum level of mental fitness required for peak performance and happiness. That's a little scary. Is there actually a test we can take to measure our mental fitness? Yes, there is. If you or your listeners go out to positiveintelligence.com, there are two assessments. The second one is the second menu item. It's called assessments. And it takes about five minutes. This is where you, within a 24-hour period, how have you felt? And if it's, if it's more negative versus more positive, it gives you a very strong or it gives you a listing of where your saboteurs are. And you can also get your positivity score at the same website, just on the third menu item by clicking score. And it takes two minutes to find out where your positive intelligence quotient is currently. With that explanation, you may just have answered my next question, um, because you say that positive intelligent levels have been shown to correlate directly with overall happiness levels and performance relate relative to your potential. You're talking work, but we all know that work affects our personal lives. So does that correlate there, too? Yes, it absolutely does. Um, positive intelligence has been used or the testing has been done in 50 countries with over 500,000 people. And even though I am a career expert, positive intelligence really can go into any area where I have found the most is deeper relationships, better performance within, if you are into different activities, sports, it can go into dieting. It can go into stress management. So the sixth week of positive intelligence is actually focused on where in your life do you want to really lean in and get more mental fitness. And that's where I continue the coaching relationships with with my clients. So I'm not just a transactional career coach. I really go much deeper where the overall life performance is what my, my goal is. So people may come to you just originally thinking it's all about their work life, but as it, time goes on, they realize that it's a big picture thing. Very much so. Can I give an example? Oh, please. So I have a client who is a very successful, high-achieving woman. She is over 50, and she found herself very hypersensitive, crying all the time, 
the relationship with her husband was deteriorating. They were arguing a lot. She just was not motivated. She was burnt out and stressed and completely overwhelmed at work. And so she came to me and we did the PQ score, which was 26. And just to give some perspective, 75 is the goal score where you can start to achieve peak performance and deeper relationships. Within the seven-week program, we were able to, and she worked really hard with this. So it's about consistency, methodical focus on having a goal to live better and quiet those inner critic, that inner critic. So in seven weeks, we did her PQ score again. It had changed to 85. And she wrote a letter to her kids, to her daughters, of what they meant to her, what they mean to her. She did some soul work. She wrote a letter to her husband of apology. And we worked on shame and forgiveness and acceptance. And now two of her employees are in the program with me. Her employee engagement scores at work have skyrocketed. Her motivation to go to work, and she actually is a nurse and works with very acute patients. The ripple effect has been better patient outcomes. So that's just one example. I also worked with a very high ranking army officer in the U S military. And he was deployed in a very stressful middle Eastern country. And he was looked over for a promotion while in this country, his motivation plummeted. So while going through the program, he was able to decrease his stress, focus on what he could control and I'm being very vague because the military doesn't like no, with that type of thing. The ripple effect helped the troops' performance. I mean, I can't make these things up, Agnes. Mm-hmm. It, it's been those are just two of our of my examples. Well, it's interesting too as you speak. I'm thinking that you know we we know how interconnected our health and our thoughts and just everything's intertwined. Every part of our life is intertwined with another part. And in both examples that you just, both your clients, it could have resulted in serious outcomes, you know, whether it was stress related for the nurse or death for a, for a military person because they're in that arena. So just so important how, you know, you may think you've got a, a bit of a problem in one part of your life, but um, it needs to be addressed because it probably is affecting other parts of your life. That's amazing. Um, What tips do you have to help our listeners feel more connected and engaged in, well, let's talk careers in their careers. Well, the first part is to just know that you're not alone, that with COVID and the workplace is changing. And at least in North America, there is a talent tsunami. A lot of people It's really a candidate market and it's an employee market right now. And what I mean by that is corporations would have so many demands that people, that humans change and conform to the organization. And I believe the organization now has to conform to what the employee or the candidate needs are. Mm -hmm. And so The first tip I would have is know that you're not alone. The second one is that if you feel your voice and your confidence has decreased, ask for help. So many times as women, we feel like we have to be the controller or the pleaser or the one that the orchestrator of the family And we don't ask for help. And when that happens, everything around us kind of just stagnates or falls apart. So ask for help from a friend, from a psychologist, from a coach, from someone that's in your circle of trust. And 
know that you are a beautiful person and that's the way you were intrinsically made that the universe wants more for you. Well, it's interesting too, that you mentioned, you know, you sort of feel you have to, and I think so many women that listen and myself included have been guilty of this, of thinking that if, if you don't hold it all together, if you don't keep all the pieces moving in the right direction, um, that things will fall apart. Whereas sometimes the exact opposite is true that they fall apart because you're trying to just over control in many ways. Whereas if you do ask for help and sort of say, okay, you know, and even on a family level, I need help with this or I can't do that, that it really pulls people together, you know, because, because, go ahead. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, no, no. I was just going to say that within a family, like people, I think all people, like whether it's the spouses or the children want to know that they're helping create that, that circle of family. I actually absolutely agree with you. Um, I think from the women I work with, so many feel disconnected with who they are and are unhappy. And they just kind of like what you described, how I felt in 2019, my soul just felt like it was dying. And self-care is when I, another tip that I have is I had to, I knew something was changing in 2019. I just did not want to get up and go to work. I didn't want to fly across the country anymore, but I felt the responsibility because I was the breadwinner. My husband's a stay at home dad, and I just could not do it anymore. So self-care became hugely important for me. And so some of the shifts that I made, I became a Zumba instructor. Um, I love positive dance and movement and Latino music. And so I've been sharing that fun and joy with others because it just gets you out of your head and it's good for you. I now do more workouts. I totally changed my diet and I leaned in to things that felt right and said no, because no is a complete sentence to things that just didn't fit with me anymore, or it's okay to not have people in your life that are toxic to bring yoga or a spiritual practice or a holistic way of life. So that self-care becomes a priority so that everything starts to spiral in a positive direction instead of in a negative direction, which is kind of like things going down the drain. Very much so. So this this podcast is for boomer women. And because there are so many variations of boomer woman out there, I try to have a variety of guests. I try to have a variety of subjects. And the, the one constant or the two constants, I guess, are self-care and finding the joy. Now, I think we've been fairly serious here, and I I do have a few more questions I want to ask you, but you and I spoke a couple of weeks ago, and talking about Zumba, tell our listeners, I mean, we need a chuckle right about now, tell our listeners about Johnny Cash and Zumba, please. (laughs) Oh my gosh, that's so funny. Um, So I am a Zumba instructor, and I actually teach a lot of women in their 60s and 70s. And one of my regular dancers and Zumba is, I heard Johnny Cash's Ring of Fire. And so I made a song, I made a choreography, and I, I thought that the women would love it. And they, they did. But after one of my classes, one of the women who's in her 70s came up to me and said, Shelly, that Ring of Fire is exactly how my urinary infection feels. <laughs> reason I love that story is because I think I might have mentioned a couple of weeks ago that that I have taught seniors fitness for 30 years and that is exactly the comment that would come out of one of my my people's faces uh they've just got such a great sense of humor it's just right there's there's no holds barred you know oh my god it was so funny she like comes up and she's sneaking up and she's really (laughs) whispering it to me Shelly I'm so sorry but that 
I love Johnny Cash, but that ring of fire, that's exactly how my urinary tract infection feels. <laughs> I just started laughing. I mean, it was just perfect. And then a lot of times they'll also say, how do you move your waist like that? And like shimmy and salsa and merengue, because like there are these Midwestern women who, you know, they can't move like that. Um, anyway, it's so fun and such a pleasure to, uh, to be able to get them to move. Yeah. Yeah. Well, a lot of the women in my classes are in their 80s and 90s, believe it or not. And oh, I love it. they wouldn't have sidled up and told me that. They would have announced it to the class. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I so. have others that I could share as well, but it, it's all good. That's, that was hilarious. <laughs> okay. That was our moment of humor. That's great. Okay. One question I do want to ask because I'm hoping it might reach into other parts of our lives as some of the subjects we've uh, covered so far. What's your guidance on gaining clarity, confidence, courage while going through a transition? And, and it's that word transition. By the time we're in our 50s or 60s, there have been, still are, transitions happening. Well, of course there are still transitions happening because for women, our life expectancy has gone up and women as boomers are in the prime of their life. And so to answer your question, how to gain clarity, confidence, and courage. The first thing we start with is your vision. What is your vision now that you are 50 or above? What is your purpose? How do you want to live the next chapter of your life? That other piece is that mental fitness is not letting all of the trauma and stress and overwhelm and burnout lead your life. But so I always ask, do your thoughts lead your life or do you you lead your thoughts? So it's really that alignment of your vision work and just increasing your mental fitness and your wisdom along with some strategies and tactics of leaning in more to how are you going to get more in shape? What classes do you want to go to? What are your strategies? And then being very tactical about integrating those new habits into your life. The fifth part of that is consistency. And an intention is great, but without consistency, it will not remain a life habit and change and transformation won't occur. And then you put in positivity to all of those things. That is how you amplify and pivot and change and transform to gain that clarity, confidence, and courage through any t- transition. I think what I'm appreciating, uh, no, I won't say most, you've had great information, but I've just spoken about the women in my class in their 80s and 90s now. I've known them for 30 years, many of them. And what you just said is how a number of them have lived their retirement years, their elder years of knowing what they want, going for it, you know, keeping relationships or finding new things. And then the the consistency, it's, it's really amazing. And I think I've you're giving me a whole new respect for these women that I've always loved and respected. So thank you for that. That's great. My pleasure. That's kind of the framework that I use with my clients through career transition. But because I'm not just a transactional coach, I get into a lot of life issues. And I found that that framework for me through my own transition is I have to have a vision and a goal of where I'm going, but much more than that, what is my sole purpose? And then if I don't have the courage expressed, especially to take that next step and I let fear run my life, I really, even when I have those fear moments, try to lean into faith. And I'm not talking about faith from just a religious standpoint or spiritual standpoint. I'm talking about faith in myself that I know that there's something else out there for me. I read your bio and I have to ask this question. What is the Saturday night problem? And and how is it used? Like, 
that was one part. I mean, I, I'm not saying I know what you do, but I was understanding what you did to a certain extent until I read something about a Saturday night problem. And I thought I've got to ask. Yeah, no problem. It's, it can be a Saturday or a Sunday night problem. Or Sunday. I'm sorry. It is Sunday. Oh, it's all good. <laughs> it's all good. So the Sunday night problem is for job seekers is think about Sunday nights. If you are dreading going to work and you're thinking about how the heck am I going to solve this problem? So the Sunday night problem is understanding what the pain points or the growth points are of the company, your partner, yourself. Let me give you an example. Um, I had some fear recently because I'm growing uh, one of my businesses and I feel scared, excited, but scared of my next step. And my own coach was talking to me about what are the pain points and the growth points of those that I want to work with, those companies that I want to have sponsorships with? What is the pain point of my teenage daughter for her growth, for example? And yes, I am an older mom. I started a little later, but it's using that framework and that thought process of how do people feel on that Sunday night before they start something? And so many times I can think about that. What's the pain point for my daughter in high school now being a freshman? Probably a lot of things. And I can, I can tee up more empathy for her when I try to help her from what, what's her pain point and then how, what are her growth points from that pain? Mm, good information. Um, and I, I don't want to take away from that. I apologize because after our chat about Zumba, when I glanced at my notes and saw Sunday night problem, I thought of Saturday night fever. So I'm sorry. Well, we can. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. It shows where my brain. Get the Bee Gees out, Agnes. Like, let's get the Bee Gees out and like do some um, stay sun alive. stuff. Stay oh yeah, exactly. We can't throw them away. Oh, dear. <laughs> I <laughs> I so appreciate all of your information, Shelley. What haven't I asked you that you believe might be should be of importance? to boomer women still navigating the workplace? What haven't I asked you? You know, I think you alluded to it earlier is boomer women still in the workplace. Find the joy, find the passion, find the motivation of where is that joy coming from? And if you're not living in that joy, then is there something that you have to amplify or pivot in your own life? Because I feel like more and more people I know are not as healthy as they want to be. They are cancer survivors. And all of them that have had much more perspective are always talking about find the joy. Yeah. <laughs> Just it's funny how three words can sometimes sum up so much of where a person needs to focus and what they need to strive for. Yeah. Uh, break it down like that. You have a program, programs, I'm not sure, uh, that might be of interest to our listeners. Absolutely. So one of the programs that I work with is the seven week positive intelligence course. And I offer them throughout the year. You can go on my website at best you career advantage and click on mental fitness and there's a video on there that talks about what mental fitness and positive intelligence is and gives some testimonies of men and women who have been through it. So that's really the starting point for all of my clients is just getting their inner critic quieted and getting their voice back, especially for my women. They always feel like they can't speak their truth, that they're undervalued that they can't ask for what they want because that inner critic in their head tells them they're not good enough. So I'm here to blast that, amplify that out of the water and like say that that is just poppycock. And and isn't there a TEDx talk there by the person that you mentioned? Yes, yes. There's yeah. a TEDx talk by Shirzad Shamin 
that people can watch um, that is also on the positiveintelligence.com website, but also on my website as well. Okay. So is that the, the best place to find you online? That is the best place to find me online. And you can also find other podcasts I've been on in the media. You can find out more about my bio. You can look at testimonials. All of my programs start with positive intelligence. And then we get really, really clear about your strategies, your tactics, and helping you find that joy. That's great. Um, Okay. I'll touch base with you probably in the next day or two to make sure I've got all the links. But if it's primarily your website, that's good. Listeners, there is a lot of great information at Shelley's website. I spent some time there, some as in stretching that word out over the last couple of days. So I really do recommend you check it out. If you have comments on today's show, you can leave them where you listen to podcasts or at twoboomerwomen.com forward slash join dash the dash conversation. If you want to be a guest on the podcast or know someone who would, there's an application form at the website too. Or, big or, if there's an issue you want addressed, something that boomer women you know want help with or information on, let me know and I'll find a guest to talk to us. Shelley Johnson, thank you so much for being our guest today. You're like a shot of rejuvenation. Wow, I've never been called a shot of rejuvenation, but I love that. And for me, I truly have found a gift and so many opportunities to bring joy back to people. Sometimes it's serious and sometimes we laugh our ass off. So I hope that I got your listeners and women laughing, but also (laughs) thinking soulfully about what they really want in life and what commitment they're ready to make to get that. Thank you. It's yeah. um, I think those two, the combination of the two have got to be the essence of life. Uh, really look at what you do. Me too. And, and I, my last piece of advice is go to a Zumba class and just try it. <laughs> do you have any online? Um, I don't. I do them live and outside. Well, there, but... when, you, when you get them live, send me the link and we'll send it okay, out. Okay. <laughs> thank you, Agnes. That's awesome. And I still do want to talk to you about uh, El Camino. That's great. Muy bien. I cannot wait. <laughs> have a great rest of week. You too. Take care. Bye. Bye. Bye.